previously on balls. Campo, what are you laughing at? Just laughing. Yeah. Ask nice to kick left foot. No, he's 56 years old. Oh, the poor old fella. <laughs> but apparently slotted one from 40 meters in his uh, in his Sunday best shoes the other was day. Was that in his dreams or? No, at a, at a, at a field. He was coaching <laughs> kids. you mock nice words of his And he didn't get up. <laughs> Just anyway. ask me about the game I played against him in Italy where I kicked the right foot and left foot field goal against him. No, yeah, well, it's not a field goal. It's a penalty. Come on. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, but he made more tackles than you in his career, and that's saying something. Jeez, I did two. He must have done three. <laughs> yeah, it was three, I think. Yeah. We've got one other person we've got to, uh, that's on our short list. We'll give him a call when we wrap it up. It's going to be a short and sweet one today, Campo. It's the last of our hangar, our flush outs. Oh, dear. Brought to you by Imperial Collection, home of the signature brands. Uh, go and check out our website, all the fabulous vehicles that Sasha, Daisy, and, uh, and Ian go and test out and play with at Imperial Collection. Uh-huh. Uh, William Nickel and Bryanston is where you'll find them. Go and pop in, have a look at what's on their floor. Or go to their website, imperialcollection.co.za. Otherwise, go through ours and click on their button. So, as the end of the season comes, all blacks undefeated. But, gee, that was a squeaker, hey? I actually, believe it or not, I actually uh, I was out coaching a young kid when um, and he was actually, uh, his father was Scottish. And I said, well, what's your Irish score? He said, oh, can you believe it's 22-7? I said, all blacks. He said, no, Ireland. I said, you are kidding and um, I came home and I watched the last minutes, and then I actually saw um, what's his name? Uh, Owens give a penalty to the All Blacks. So I turned it off, thinking, ah, oh. and they won the game. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm. But yeah. that's the way the All Blacks are. They never never say die, and that's a, a team, a true champion team. Yeah, that's exactly uh, exactly what they say. You see, champion sides who uh, win from the most devastating or sort of hopeless positions. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. Went on to win the game. So undefeated for the year, undoubtedly the number one side. Don't have to debate that one. The Springboks, uh, their win against France, not a great game, but uh, a good record. Their third best year of all, I think, of all time. Yeah, look, it doesn't really matter. I think these days how you win, and uh, you know the box, you know they, they play a bit like the All Blacks now. They go out there and try and smash you for the first twenty thirty, then they take it easy in the second half. Really, they should dominate again, but they don't seem to. They just seem to sit back and defend. Now, you've got to start to think, if at half time they're behind by 20, what, how are they going to play in the second half? So, you know, they've got a good combination going. You can see they're very enthusiastic. It was a great win. I think the last time was Nick Mallett's team in uh, 97, I think it was. So, mm. well done to the box. They've, they've got uh, some really good players there. And uh, it's going to be another tough year next year, but it's a great way to finish, you know, to be number two in the world. Mm. And uh, but again, they're very fortunate where they're playing some good teams week in, week out, and, and I think that's very important in, this, in the the championship trophy is to come to a World Cup knowing that you know that if you're going to play the best teams week in, week out, and you're behind with you know three points with a minute to go, that you can still win. Yeah, we spoke to Nick Mallard about this earlier, and obviously there's no doubt. And Simon made the point that uh, one and two have pulled away from the rest of the world. I would imagine England are sort of still maybe nipping at the heels. I know they, they lost to the All Blacks this year, but beat them at the end of last year in their last game. And I think they're going to probably show something in the next World Cup. Well, after the Ashes, mate, who knows? Who cares? <laughs> well, don't, don't start counting them too quickly. Only a little bit of sledging has taken everyone by surprise. Oh, oh I tell you. You're allowed to sledge when you win, aren't you? You, know, you guys used to. I mean, that, that's the problem with Aussie cricket. That's what happened. They lost their... Their sledgeability. They lost. Oh, there their, we go. It's back. They lost their. Uh, <laughs> they lost their. They lost their growl. It's back by the looks uh, of things. One test match, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, doesn't matter, mate. <laughs> when you win one, you've got to make the most of it. <laughs> well, we'll you, know, like you know, the guys go and have a drink, and they all get sacked. So, sheesh. <laughs> oh, no, no, hold on. What was what was that? Curtly Beal? Now, what what was in the latest one? Oh my goodness! Yeah, he went out in the drink. Now, how dumb are these guys? They know that in Sydney, at a pub, everyone knows who they are. And he has a few drinks, and he tells everybody what's in his contract. But, you know, <laughs> what a, as I what said, a the, mong. But the unfortunate thing is, you know, I mean, it, it's a culture that's happened under Deans, and all you McKenzie's still copping it. You know, you can't change overnight, and I think he's did the right thing. I mean, there's got to, you've got to get rid of that drinking culture because if that that's that's very harmful and hurtful, and you can see by the guys. But the scary thing is when Ashley Cooper's mother sort of supports him, he's, I think Ashley Cooper's thirty. <laughs> you know the you know the saying, Camper. There's no pull for stupidity. I mean, these guys are just dumb. No, 
you know, these guys, it has happened. It's, it's happened over years. You, you, it takes a while. And I think you McKenzie's doing the right thing, you know. He, uh, you know, I keep on saying, I said to a journal today that I can still remember in the 91 World Cup, you know, Ewan was playing and Phil Coons on the Thursday night before we played the All Blacks. We went to town and had a drink. You know, I was drinking orange juice and they were drinking lime and sodas. You know, and it's the truth. It wasn't, you know, we realised our responsibility. We realised that people were watching and you've got to accept that. And these guys these days think that they can go out and do what they like and there's always someone out there now on phones and that is going to dob you in. So it's really just being, you know, common sense. And the good thing about it, um, that uh, Cooper, Quake Cooper wasn't one of the guys, which is actually fantis- fantastic. I think, I think he's... I think he's the only one that they haven't busted. Sorry, he's the only one that they haven't they haven't nailed for that yet. I think the rest of the squad have been. Um, yeah, yeah, but but, Darren, he, you but know, doesn't he steal laptops? No, that was before. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my <laughs> goodness! Now the apple of everyone's <laughs> eye. Calm you down a bit. <laughs> what is your qualification to play rugby for Australia? What did um, you either got to be a raging alcoholic or a thief? <laughs> well, Campo's neither. So there we go. You're going to be born in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, it's it's uh, yeah, it's not a good thing, but it has added a bit of a lighter side. This weekly drama, and it's not like you think like after one one or two guys got busted, we get less, and, wh- and maybe one single guy might be stupid. No, a week yeah, later, six that, of them uh, get nailed. I think the biggest problem is that you know I don't think there's a lot of uh, senior players around. That you know you got, you need a captain that you got to respect, and I don't think somehow Moen's going to hasn't got the respect of the players. You know, you need... I was very fortunate in my day. There was Far Jones, Andrew Slack. You know, even John Eels' first test wasn't great, but he grew into a stature, you know? And I mean, we, we're going through a period now where we're still looking for... We need a number eight to help Genier and Cooper. And we haven't searched. We haven't found them yet. So once we get that sorted out, I think you're going to find things will get back to normal. Mm. And for years, we've had so many young guys who'd led the way. You need the older guys to stand up to be counted. And that's been our problem. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> it's been a, an interesting year with Australian rugby. A uh, good year for South Africa. A great year for the All Blacks. But uh, next year, it all starts again in... Uh, and about February again, we start looking. Yeah, at it them. does. It starts again. It's going to be a long year. It'll be interesting to see which players are rested next year, leading into the Rugby World Cup, mm. which is very important, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, guy like Jean de Villiers, thirty-three years old. He's been told that he's get he's got the Springbok captaincy for next year. So there's one that's going to go into cotton wool by the looks of things. Otherwise, you can't play him the same way you played him this year when he's going to be thirty-four, going on thirty-five. Yeah, in the World well, Cup. thirty-five is yeah. you know, I mean, but, but as I said, that the teams have won the Rugby World Cups. Over the years, the guys who were 33, very, very experienced. I see Bucky's boy to, uh, back again. And, um, you know, that's you need that experience at World Cups. You need yeah. the young guys to aspire to be like these guys. And that's where Richie McCall is so good uh, for the All Blacks. You know, he just he gets on and does his job. He's not a dirty player. You, you never hear anything controversial about him. No, yeah. not at all. And, and nothing. And Dan Carter, that's what you need. You need those role models because then the young guy said, he's the man I want to be like. Mm. And that's what they need. And that's where... You know, in South Africa, they've got those guys. Um, and in Australia, we haven't. And that's why we are struggling. But next year's a new year. Mm. So, what, 14, 15 months out from a Rugby World Cup. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. It was only nice if Richard McCaw just played his rugby on the correct side of the field. Uh, we'll... Stop whinging, will you? <laughs> Let's leave it so there. So none, none of your players cheat. No, you try to say that? No. no, of course not. Oh, of course not. No. Let, let's leave it there. Agree to disagree once again, David. Yeah, of course. We've got to leave. We've got to. We can't leave the uh, the end of the season with uh, us agreeing on things. Yeah, exactly. Can we? Merry no, Christmas. We'll, we'll pick up there. <laughs> Listen, David. Thank you very much. Uh, have a <laughs> have a week. blessed Christmas. I might see you over the weekend or not. Just uh, yeah. Hope, just give us a call if yeah, you've got we'll some do. time. Eh? Yeah. I've got some nice Australian wine we brought I'll, over. I'll definitely I'll, see you over the weekend. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll catch up again soon. But thanks a lot thanks, for joining guys. us. Thanks for a great time. season. Just David. Thanks, Campo. Cheers, Campo. Awesome okay, stuff. See you guys. Bye. 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 There we go. David Campisi joining us in the flush out on Balls and Mix. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African time. Radio like you've never seen it before. Balls.co.za.